Hello, this is Scott Buccino, editor of Telecoms.com here at Mobile World Congress 2024. And I'm delighted to be speaking to Raj from Arav Solutions. We're actually going to try something a bit different, Raj, because we've got two of your colleagues here who also want to be in front of the camera. So I'm going to start by asking you, and then we're going to introduce them. So the question I want to ask you is just to introduce your company and tell us what the key trends you're talking about at the show this year are. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Uh, uh, the company name is Arav Solutions. We are predominantly the product engineering and IT consulting services, uh, working with the packet solutions and uh, helping customers to solve their complex problems uh, with respect to the emerging technology. Things where, uh, you know, what are the emerging or the trends are. So generally, when I see, I think, a lot of customers and the partners who are talking more into uh, how they can make it uh, do uh, more with the less, and, uh, uh, and, and they are talking about how operational efficiency uh, can be done. Uh, we see there are three major uh, uh, trends. One is obviously uh, generative AI, where we see 2024 is uh, you know, uh, the place where a uh, lot of use cases with respect to gener generative uh, AI are going to uh, take uh, uh, enterprise solutions. Second would be more into the data infrastructure and data uh, management, where I've seen a lot of keynotes and the solutions around the data, where they wanted to see the um, data, uh, data uh, segmentation, data analytics, and uh, a lot of things related to the data. And of course, when we talk about the generative AI, the backbone of generative AI is data, and, and that's how we can get the better solutions. And the third one is uh, uh, industrial AI, especially with the manufacturing, uh, where we see the transportation into the railways, uh, if you talk about any public services, where this uh, industrial AI would come into the picture. These are the trains and how our solutions are uh, imposing those trains and, and how we are coming up with the innovative things. Uh, back in 2000, I mean, this year itself, in January, we have introduced a new initiative, we call it uh, Co-Create Labs, right? Where we are working with the customer, the co-investing with the customer for a quick, uh, uh, quick experiment and, and do uh, uh, solutions to, to the problems or the use cases they have. Uh, where we currently have uh, created two um, accelerators. One is with the Oracle billing and revenue management. Another is the Salesforce uh, uh, industries with CPQ and CLM. And it is helping to uh, streamline the operations, especially with the month-end processes, where we have uh, uh, payments, contract, and then uh, uh, you know the billing uh, challenges that uh, sort of solve the problem uh, with the customers. And also we have uh, solutions with uh, respect to the smart cities, uh, which, help, which helps into the, the smart metering and, and some of the, the things. So on and all, if you look, look at it from that, that perspective, we are, we are ready with the solutions which are uh, aligning with the trains which, which we have seen into the Mobile World Congress. So, okay, yep. well, that's brilliant. Um, Thank, Thank you very you. much. I, I'm, not, I'm not going to invite your colleague uh, Ram to come and tell us a little bit more about that. Sure. But it's great speaking to you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Okay, so uh, it's great to, great to meet you, Ram. I've just been speaking to your colleague Raj, who, who told us, gave us an overview of Arav Solutions and what you're talking about the show. And, and he introduced a couple of products. And we've got you on now to give us a slightly deeper dive on those products and services that you offer. Absolutely. I mean, uh, we developed this uh, because of market demands. Uh, our customers are saying, do more with less. And uh, that's kind of the new normal. And in response to that, we came up with our co-create labs. So what do we do in our co-create labs? Our co-create labs are initiatives where our customers bring their business problems along with the anchor data that is needed to solve those business problems. And we bring in our technical gravitas. We bring in our AIML tool sets, we bring in our toolkits, we bring in our cloud infrastructure uh, components and services, and we bring our technical gravitas to the table. And we co-create the solution for our customers so that your, your customers are able to quickly experiment, decide which use cases are you know, worth investing in, and then you know, move on from there. So it's all about, hey, how do I accelerate tech adoption? Especially with generative AI, or for any new tech that's coming up, let's say you want to do a blockchain-based solution, so how do you essentially get to the market by experimenting quickly, deciding what is needed, investing in it, and moving on, and scaling up. So that's what we do as part of our co-create labs. And there are a bunch of factors behind this. Why customers you know, need help in doing this? I mean, they have a bunch of decisions to make. 
do I go with you know open source large language models when it comes to AI tool sets, or do I go with proprietary models? And what is the competence that is needed for me internally to uplift the entire organization so that my organization is productive with all these new technologies and tools? And to help them address these questions is where we come in. And these are the accelerators then that we develop. So, so far we have developed two accelerators that we have just launched at this particular event at Mobile World Congress Barcelona. And the first accelerator is Oracle Billing and Revenue Management, uh, Insight Forge, where you're able to converse naturally with an Oracle data model, and you're able to then get insights on your data. So you don't need to have you know, large data engineering teams, essentially processing data and building up these reports and dashboards. You can do it on the fly with our specific tool. Okay? And the second part of this is we address a lot, lot, uh, a lot of the back office operations. Essentially, there are inefficiencies when it comes to uh, invoice processing, uh, churn management, uh, there are mismatches between you know, contra contract information and uh, invoices, and how do they solve all this? Because it needs a huge back office operations team to do all this. And this is where we come in. We help automate all this. We help realize you know, the value of generative AI in these specific scenarios, and we help to solve this. And what we have seen with some of our anchor customers is that there is up to 60% savings on efficiency. Yeah. And we <laughs> essentially you know, generate, uh, use generative AI for these kinds of scenarios. Okay, well that's brilliant. Well, uh, that's given us a really good um, sort of deeper dive into your product set. My, my final question is going to be to look to the future, but we've got one more of your colleagues uh, waiting in the wings, so I'm going to thank you and, and invite him to come over now. Thank you, Scott. Cheers. Cheers. Welcome, Bavin. I've just spoken to uh, two of your colleagues and got uh, an overview of what um, Arab Solutions does and some of your products. And as the final part of the trilogy, I just want to ask you to look to the future. What trends do you see coming up in the next few years and how is Arab Solutions going to address those trends? Yeah, certainly. So um, over the coming years, I think um, yeah, the adoption of generative AI um, in the telco sector is, is a certainty. And that at scale as well. I think to begin with, um, you know, it will start slow to begin with, um, with you know, laying that, those strong foundations in place and a, fo a key, key focus on customer experience, customer service, and problem management ticket um, resolutions, you know, areas where we know that there is already um, quite a bit of inefficiencies. Um, so target on those first, and then as a, you know, from there to sort of further expand uh, across the rest of the sort of value chain of the telco sector. Right? I'd also go, go as far as to say that I think that we'll see a rigorous sort of change in terms of operationally, um, particularly around change management and uh, organizational de development of people. Um, I think as much as it's going to be really kind of, um, you know, there's going to be a real desire to start to take on generative AI and start to build more solutions. However, operators are going to need to become, you know, ensure that competence uplift of their workforce is going to be key and paramount to make sure that for scalability and long term in the, in the world of generative AI, it's going to be possible. And that also applies to services businesses like ourselves, right, to make sure that we've kind of adopted and ensured in terms of competence uplift um, for longer term. So I'd also like to say that um, security and resilience will play a major role um, in the adoption uh, of scalable generative AI. Um, particularly when it comes to you know, having specific security policies for generated AI solutions, as well as um, ensuring the data management across the ecosystem of the business has been considered throughout. So for us, you know, our solutions, um, you know, we're ready for this journey um, and we're ready to partner with our customers to co-create that future. Okay, that's great, thank you very much.